Gav should be back by now. Ah, Clive! How <laughs> I've missed that scowl! Where's my report? What, no kind words be ruled, pal Gav? <laughs> If it's kind words you're after, you're fishing in the wrong barrel. Now sit down, you fool. So, you remember how quick the Empire was to occupy the Dominion after the fall of Drake's head? And how pissed off all the other nations were that they didn't think to do it first? Half a century of independence gone at the whim of a madman. So much for their bloody treaty. Clearly the promise of unblighted land and the world's supply of crystals was too much for his radiance to resist. <sighs> and now the Republic's finally decided to follow suit using liberation as an excuse to declare war on Sambrek. Lined up right outside the Dominion's gates as we speak, looking to starve the Imperials into submission. And now all eyes are on the Strait of Ortha. Well, the two nations beat their shields. The rest sharpen their daggers, ready to set upon the war-weary victor. They'll never see us coming. It's time we moved on the Mother Crystals. Four mother crystals remain in storm and ash. Drake's breath near Ironholm. Drake's fang in Dalmechia. Drake's spine in Walud. And Drake's tail here in the Crystalline Dominion. With the bulk of the Republican army marching to Twinsight, Drake's fang will be left exposed. That is exactly the move Kupka would anticipate. And if there is anything these past five years have taught us, is that he loves his traps. There is one place, however, where nobody will be expecting us to go. Drake's breath. There's a shitload of sea between us and it, and I've never been much of a swimmer. I have an acquaintance in Port Isolde who may be able to help. Who's that, then? My uncle. Byron Rosfield. Lord Byron Rosfield of the Seven High Houses, the trade magnet with holdings in over a hundred cities. Wait. Rosfield. And you're a Rosfield, of course. My uncle's name gave him his start in the world, but it was his acumen which earned him his fortune. Along with a handsome fleet of ships. Well, it's settled then! <laughs> what are we waiting for, eh? Huh? What are we waiting for, indeed? What can I get you, Sid? Honestly, Sid, you're too nice for your own good. Do you hear that, ladies and gents? The next round's courtesy of the realm's most benevolent outlaw. <laughs> Thank you. 
Don't be a stranger, Sid. Did they? Soon enough. See, I, I am, uh, was hoping to speak to you. Is everything all right? Oh, yeah, it's just, well, as you know, we've been trying to grow fruit down here. It's good to know that something of the old hideaway still lives on. Martel's pride and joy. It was a sapling when she rescued it from the rubble, but look at it now. All our hard work's finally paying off. I took it on, you see, after she after she died, and now the fruit's finally ready to eat. And not only is it ready, it's actually tasty. Sweet as you like, in fact. She bred the bitter right out of it. Impressive. And welcome news to more than a few, I'd say. I thought this first harvest could go to the Curse Breakers, on account of all they do for the hideaway. You couldn't take them some, could you? Seems better them coming from you. It'll be nice being the bearer of good news for a change. Oh, thank you. She always had a soft spot for that lot, see? And once they've had their share, I'll see to it that everyone else gets some. Here you go. Martell apples, they're called, in honor of her memory. You hear that, Martell? Today's finally the day. something to eat. Here, courtesy of Martel. Martel. Now, where have I heard that name before? Weren't she the girl from the furrows? Course she was. <laughs> An odd sort, that one. Loved plants more than people. <laughs> I am brave as a bane might. Remember when she ran back into the hideaway to collect them trees when Titan attacked? Wait. These aren't those apples, are they? Well, I'll be. She'd have been proud, and rightly so. Thank you, Sid. Others weren't so lucky, though. Mm. Them old apples were enough to curdle your gut. But these beauties are as sweet as you like. I'll have to pay the boys down in the backyard a visit to tell them thanks. A gift from the backyard. For your service. Blimey, these take me back. I haven't seen a hideaway apple since. <sighs> Old Sid was the only one who could stomach the things. 
He'd nab them right from the branch, make Martell livid. Not that anyone could stay mad at the man for long. That sounds like the Sid I knew, all right. Planning on keeping that lot to yourselves, were you? Hang on. These aren't Martells, are they? I'm glad to see someone carried on what she started. Can't have been easy, not in the Deadlands. Reckon she'd be happy knowing all her hard work didn't go to waste. Clyde, tell the lad down in the backyard to run some over for me, will ya? <sighs> not so much as a thank you. Well, I've got some manners at least. Thanks, Sid. You can leave the basket with me. I'll see that the others get their share. Oh, and uh, give our compliments to the gardener, won't you? That was the last of the apples. I should head to the backyard and pass along everyone's regards. Can't remember the last time I had fresh fruit. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. I hear there's trouble in Rosaria. I think it's all right to touch him. breakers send their thanks and their compliments they were clearly very fond of Martel they remembered her a after all these years I suppose she was very kind even to a tongue-tied lummox like me you were one of the good ones Martel why did you have to die she put everything into her work she wasn't gonna rest until we had fruit sweet enough to enjoy and now we do. When she died, I named a sapling after her. And now it's a full-grown tree. Martell lives on through the fruit it bears. And through you. Her dream would have died with her, had you not kept it alive. That's something to be proud of. I, oh, I didn't do anything really, but... Thank you. You're kinder to me than I deserve. By the way, Otto's expecting some of your crop. And I wouldn't mind some of it either, if that's not too much to ask. Of course not. I'll see that you're both well provided for. They like your fruit, Martel. Isn't that wonderful? I'd say it's about time we planted you some siblings, don't you think? Just look at her. Isn't Martell in fine fettle? And what about young Boppy Mill here? He's got some work to do if he wants to catch up with his brother Kenneth. favorite pupil. Allow me to educate you. Here's the latest information I have. Here you are. The state of the realm is ever-changing, Clyde. So Martha's all right. Yeah. Oh, Clive! Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. The Patron's Whisper? Does that mean... Someone else is taking care of our friend's donations? Oh, 
Oh no, that's still me. It's just Karen has her toll, Blackthorn has his hammer. I thought a new name might liven things up. I still catalogue every item that arrives, in addition to setting aside those tokens of appreciation the sender has specified are to be presented to you personally. Would you like to see if we have any? Business is busy. Still. Words are immortal. <sighs> Your benefactors are a generous lot. This. All yours. I gave you that one, didn't I? Best of luck out there, Sid. What's the matter, Nectar? The hunt board? It's where the curse breakers post sightings of particularly fearsome beasts. Those that might pose a threat to our operations if they were left to roam free. Just because they can't be dealt with when they're spotted, doesn't mean they can't be dealt with later. Was that what you wanted to know? Right. Well, leaving your mightiness aside for the moment, the people of Alastia are going through a lot already. What with the blight and the war. The last thing they need is ungodly fiends terrorizing them on top of everything else. So if the curse breakers are too busy to help, then perhaps I can. Or at least I can try. I don't think so.
comes as ragged as goat's locks. I hear there's trouble in Rosaria. Think it's all right to touch him? <laughs> 